Okay, let's talk about multiple choice math questions. And this is a pretty frequent encounter. Anytime you're taking a test, it can be a, a test in your, let's say, your algebra class, or it could be like a test like the GED, SAT, ACT, a teacher certification exam. Who knows? There's a ton of different type of really important uh, tests that have math you know, in it, and it doesn't have to be in a math class. So multiple choice questions are very common. And what I want to show you here is something you absolutely need to be thinking about anytime you face a multiple choice math uh, question. So this is kind of going to be kind of the best way you want to be thinking about uh, multiple choice math questions. And it's not, um, what I'm going to show you here doesn't work with every single situation. But in fact, there are many type of questions um, that are designed for you to figure out the right answer without you actually uh, uh, knowing how to uh, solve the situation. Okay, so in other words, you can figure out what is the correct <laughs> selection here, even if you don't know how to solve the problem. So you're going to want to stick around here. This is an absolute uh, um, vital video. And some of you out there might already kind of know this, but we're going to get to this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll, of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my uh, math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different uh, math courses. I have all the big courses like pre-algebra, algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, college algebra. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here. Uh, soon, but all my courses are extremely comprehensive and I really um, all video based. I really show you how to solve the most common problems you're going to face in middle and high school mathematics. Also, help a lot of those uh, you out there that do an independent study, like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning program. And then, obviously, if you're struggling in your math class, I can definitely help you out as well. Now, one thing you need to be doing to help yourself out is taking great math notes over decades of teaching mathematics. One thing is uh, clear to me, those students who take great math notes almost always do great in uh, their grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who say, just, ah, you know, note-taking is not for me, I don't like taking notes, or I'll take notes every other week. Listen, uh, you know, I was a student once, I made a lot of mistake mistakes, um, and, you know, you pay a price for that, okay? One thing you cannot cheat or just think to yourself, you got a photographic memory or I'll just cram before the test or I'll borrow my best friend's notes, which are much better than my notes. The thing about it is this. If you don't take notes, you're really not um, focused or helping, uh, you know, re helping your brain retain this information. There's too much stuff that's coming your way, especially... You know, as you uh, get into the more advanced mathematics, pre-algebra, and above. So uh, focus on your note-taking. It is, uh, does require effort, uh, and you'll get better at it over time. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find a link uh, to those uh, notes in the description of this video. Okay, so... Let's get into this extremely important uh, situation here, okay? Multiple choice math question. So here's the thing. Let's say I gave you uh, this problem here. And okay, so let's say here's the situation, right? What do I have here? I have an equation. Now here I said solve this problem, okay? So solve... I don't have a choice. I'm going to have to actually do the work if I know how to do the work to get the solutions to this problem. So that really requires a lot of, you know, skill and knowledge. However, test uh, designers, and as a math teacher, I've designed a lot of tests, and those people who uh, design tests, math teachers, will be like, hmm, even if this person uh, forgot exactly how to solve this, if I gave them kind of some options here, all right, these will be clues. This, these right here, um, if they didn't remember exactly how to solve this, but they knew enough about the situation, they could use the answers to figure out the right selection. Because look, you know, you got uh, one out of four chance, so one of these things are right. One thing too on multiple choice questions: never, never, ever skip a question unless, unless, okay, there is an unless there, your test uh, penalizes incorrect answers, and even then you still need to kind of think about it. So you get to, you need to know your test, whether it's like the SAT 
or ACT, uh, especially those type of tests that if you get the answer wrong, they actually take away points. But if there is no penalty for you know, a wrong answer, you never skip any question. So just, you know, circle away, be like, oh, it's C, never leave anything blank. So the thing about it is this, what I want to talk about uh, here is when we can use the answers to uh, absolutely identify the correct answer. Now, I'm going to focus in uh, namely on equations, okay? So on a math test, when you uh, see an equation, okay, and it's multiple choice, there should be no excuse for you not selecting the right answer, okay? Now, what you don't want to do is to, like, look at this question and, well, it depends, right? If the problem is not that hard, you could kind of solve it, get your answer, okay, and then identify the answer. But let's suppose you don't know how to solve this and you're like, hmm, I'm not quite sure. Well, in that case, you don't want to even uh, risk it. When you have an equation problem, okay, uh, in mathematics, and you're given three choices, let's say A, B, C, uh, of course it would probably be A, B, C, D, or maybe E, but here are three solutions. Look, I don't have none of the above, okay, or like here, let's put another option, none, okay, let's just say I have these three choices. How can we determine which is the right answer? Well, this is what you do, okay, number one, if you're taking a math test and you see this equation symbol and you see some variables and you have some answers here, automatically like let alarms and go off in your brain. Like, okay, okay I got to need to stop and think. Uh, do I want to just do all the work here or do I want to do what I'm going to show you? And that is the following. You can plug in your uh, these answers, these possible answers into the equation and check to see if it's true. So let me show you how this works. Okay, so let's check to see if x equals 2 is the correct answer. So I would go 4. Okay, I'm going to plug in 2. Okay, if, if x equals 2 is a solution, I'm going to plug in 2, okay, where x is, and I'm checking to see if when I simplify the left-hand side, if it's going to be equal to 0. If it, it's equal to 0, then zero is equal to zero, then in fact that is a solution. So let's go ahead and do the work. So here we have two squared, so this is four times uh, two squared is of course four minus two. We don't even have to continue on. You see how fast you can do this? There's no way this is gonna be equal to zero. Okay, we have uh, eight minus two. You know, you, don't, you could be like, okay, real quick. You, you know, in other words, you don't have to go and do every single step to check uh, to see if this particular number is going to make this side of the equation zero. It's, it's definitely not. Okay, so this is not a candidate. This is out. Okay, so now you're like, okay, that one's not um, an answer. Now I'm down to these two uh, questions. I have a 50-50 shot. Now when you're checking solutions uh, with something like that, always try to check the nice easy numbers first. So here we have x equals one-fourth. Uh, you know, I would not go right to checking this because you may, you know, you're dealing with fractions and whatnot. Check the easy numbers if you can. So let's check x equals one. So we'll go four, we'll plug in one squared. And again, I'm going to check to see if this left-hand side turns out to be zero. So one squared is one, four times one minus one. Again, you can see there's no way this is gonna work out. This is four minus one. So you don't have to do all this. Four minus one is three is equal to zero. At this stage in the game, you can already see there's no way this is going to become a zero, okay? So this is not true. Therefore, x, equal, uh, x is equal to one. Uh, we check that. It is not the solution. Now, what is the solution? Well, this is the solution by default, okay? x equals one-fourth. Now, this particular um, problem actually has two solutions, but let's go ahead and see. Let's just solve it directly, okay? You would have to have knowledge of factoring and quadratic equations. So what you could do here is you can um, factor out a uh, x, so it would be x times 4x minus 1 is equal to 0. Now I could set each factor equal to 0, so x is equal to 0, and 4x minus 1 is equal to 0. Now I can solve for x here, so that's 4x is equal to 1, or x is equal to 1 fourth. Okay, so in fact, you could have gone that route and be like, okay, here's uh, one fourth. Uh, there's my answer. I'll pick that. Okay. But uh, again, for those of you out there might be like, hmm, I'm not quite sure what to do. I don't even know how to do this problem. 
well, you have the answers. This could be any equation, right? This is so, so important um, to uh, remember when you're taking multiple choice um, tests that involve mathematics. Anytime you see an equation, simple, and some sort of equation, and it's an equation, and you're given the possible answers, this, these should be absolute guaranteed 100%, you know, uh, correct answers, okay? And, you know, you should look through your test and say, okay, which ones am I going to skip? If they're open-ended, okay, let's just do a little quick test strategy here. So the multiple choice questions, okay, if I'm looking at my multiple choice questions and there's an equal sign involved, just like the situation that I just showed you, you absolutely want to leave yourself enough time to answer all those questions because you should be able to get those 100% right. But then if you have like an open-ended question, an open-ended question would be like uh, graph um, y equals x plus 1 squared minus 3. You should still know how to do this, but this is open-ended. You are you might need you know more time. You might think about that. So if you're going to if you don't really quite know how to do that, don't spend too much time here, okay? I would be like, mm, no, no, I'm going to spend more time over here really thoroughly checking, you know, things that I can, in, in fact, know how to do, okay? Remember, when you're taking a test, it's all about uh, how many points, you know, you can get correct. You know, that's what it's about, okay? So the time for, you know, showing what you know in terms of mathematics, uh, I, I would put that aside. It's, it's really the objective is score as high as you possibly can. Okay, and you want to be smart about it, and you know don't don't get bogged down in any one uh, particular question, especially an open-ended question. Now, here, I would say uh, the following uh, for an open-ended type of question: don't leave it blank either. Okay, spend a little bit of tiny time, even do anything with it. Be like, okay, show some sort of any kind of basic knowledge that you might have, and you might get some sort of partial credit, uh, even if it's a few little points. Okay, but remember, it's just a bad habit to leave any question blank, uh, with the exceptions of uh, those that you can get penalized on, and that's something that you're going to have to more thoroughly review in terms of test-taking strategy. But uh, test-taking strategy in terms of mathematics and um, multiple-choice questions, this is absolutely the best way to uh, approach equation questions. And you know, think about it. You know, there is a lot of equation questions uh, on multiple-choice math. Um, a test. Okay, so things you know, there's a ton of different type of equations you can have. You can have systems of equations, quadratic equations, rational equations, exponential equations, logarithmic equations, um, uh, linear equations. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, there's a ton of different type of equations in algebra. So it's not just this type of situation. Anytime you see the equation symbol and you have choices, you can use this strategy to uh, find and detect the right answer. Okay, so hopefully, um, you know, this is, I know it's kind of common sense, but we kind of, you know, a lot of the students, they kind of, they get so anxious about taking the test, they don't think. Okay, so think in advance, prepare mentally, have that situation awareness, and you will do very well, no doubt, on these tests. Okay, so if this video was helpful in some way, if you like this video, please consider smashing that like button. That always helps me out. And uh, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. It's a great platform for someone like myself who's obsessed with teaching math in a clear and understandable way. If you go on my channel, I have uh, tons of videos organized from basic to advanced math, but my best work will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.